How you doing everybody? Chef Vince here coming from Pritikin in Miami. Today we're going to show you how to make some flavorful, delicious dips. We have a bracamole. We're going to do some roasted corn and black bean salsa. And we're also doing a roasted corn dip. We're going to show you how to make some whole wheat crispy tortilla chips. Stay tuned. We're going to keep the calories down with the flavor up. Better is better. Progress is progress. Dips, dips, dips. We're doing dips. What dips are we doing today, chef? Roasted corn dip. We also have a corn and black bean salsa. We're also doing some bracamole. So what are we going to pair those up with? Some crispy chips or some veggie Vegetables. sticks? Vegetables. Both, right? Obviously. A yeah. little bit of both, a little, little bit both, of crunch. Little, obviously, a little of both. You can get crunch for both of these things. But let's give you some flavorful dips to, to make this um, nice and enjoyable. Well, let's go ahead and do the very first thing. Here I have some fresh raw corn right out of the refrigerator. This is simply just sweet, fresh corn. Take this, put it right in the oven for about 20 minutes, right? We're gonna put this in the oven, right on the oven rack itself, throw it in. You can put it on a sheet tray if you want, but it's really not necessary. Cooks even faster by putting it right on the actual oven rack. And what's your temp, Chef? I think it's at like 385, like 400. 400-ish? It's not, you know, it doesn't be so precise, right? Okay. So you still got maybe 20, 25 minutes in there. You don't need to soak the corn at all. Once it goes in, it is in there for 20, 25 minutes, you pull it out. It's going to carry over cook as it cools down in this husk. And that's where we're at here now, after the corn is already cooked, cooled down. If you ever had trouble getting all that kind of silk, all that hair off of the corn, it's much easier when you cook it in the husk. Just like this comes here, right out. it all comes out, a little bit out on the top. And we'll just go ahead, break that piece off. Now I can just eat the corn like this. You don't need any butter, salt. You know, pepper, all that bad stuff. Well, pepper's not bad, but salt and butter would be. Uh, but you can definitely just eat the corn like this, and it's very flavorful. What we're going to do here is stand it upright like this and cut the, the kernels off. And that's what you're going to ultimately get, um, you know, kind of breaking these pieces apart. I like kind of leaving them in big chunks. I think it makes it look more rustic and kind of shows people, I hey, do too. I took the time to make this. Looks from, nice you know, and chunky. Yeah. Also, you could see the, you could also see the wetness in the corn, which is, you know, I think sometimes corn gets a pretty bad rap because it is a carbohydrate. Um, but we always have to remember um, when foods are very watery and fibrous, they're quite filling and it's completely natural. So um, I'm, I'm not going to say, you know, you can have unlimited amount of corn, but it is a really good addition to add some fiber and some water um, to your day. And then I see you're even getting more of that little. Yeah, look at that. Just from that little that bit, little I took pulp. the back of the knife and scraped all that good flavor or that creaminess out of there. It's right. creamy and it's fibrous too. So it's kind of like adding the, like when you're adding the pulp from a, from a fruit or something like that. Okay. Adding more fiber into it. So um, it, not only is it adding to the creaminess and the texture, but you're also adding good fiber to that as well. Absolutely. So if you want to throw this corn into a food processor or somebody kind of just, uh, you know, pulverize, it, pulverize this all, you know, in, in a bowl. Uh, the cream cheese is your only kind of thing that you're gonna have to wor really worry about because it really won't really kind of just, that's why kind of why we have to put it in a food processor. Also, I kind of really like getting the corn more pureed, but still leaving it kind of chunky as well. Uh, not getting it totally pureed, but you know, having those nice, uh, you know, bursts of kind of that sweet corn in there. So, so far we have just corn in the food processor, about maybe I'd say about four years of corn because I did add some that I had already done uh, previously, just did the same exact thing I just did here. Right. So yeah. about four years. By the way, just as a side note, if you had four ears of corn, that's the same exact um, amount of calories that you would get in one small French fry from McDonald's. One, one, one small fry. One fry. Four ears of corn. Same calories. There you go. How about well, that? Well, corn gets a bad rap, but you know. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so does potatoes, but when you deep fry them, uh, yeah, that's it's definitely how you the do why. it, right? How you do it. <laughs> it's how it's how it's done. Yeah. So you know, if you steam them, if you roast them, it's a much easier way to and, and, and to cook them and keep them healthier. So taking some fresh lemons, we can simply kind of roll these out a little bit, soften them up. We'll take this, cut this in half, and I always like to just do this over a bowl to make sure that no seeds are getting lost inside my food processor. Do it like this if you want to, and just use your hands. But always like to hold the cut side up. And that way the seeds- The seeds don't go in when the cut's side up. Correct, correct. Why, why is it, Chef, that when it, most people that squeeze lemons, including myself, tend to, to do it the other way around? Like you put the the other side down. That's just what they're very used to. Because they think it's the day they want to do it. just seems just like you want, out, right? yeah. So what I, you know, and if you want to do it like that, you can. And this is, you know, for, for me, I might say this, like, look, if you want to strain this out, you could do it like this, where you're just really jabbing into these segments of the lemon 
and you're just kind of getting all that juice out. And this, this actually didn't even have it's any like, seeds. It's like, right. No, that one didn't, didn't have any seeds. Pits. Okay. No seeds on that side, but okay. Loving the vitamin C you're adding to the corn here, chef. So it's a simple way to get a lot of flavor from the citrus. If you want to use lime, lemon, orange, um, we're going to use the juice of two lemons in there. Again, do it over a separate bowl. That way, if the juice, uh, you know, as the juice is going in here and the seed gets in there, you're not going to find it, right? So right. also gives a good liquid, and you don't really have to add an oil or something like that. Where a lot of dips are going, they like to add oils to them. Yeah, correct. So. Now, we are, we are going to add a little bit more of a creamy element here by using some of this um, low-fat cream cheese. Just a little, about maybe little three bit four, goes a long way, right, three Chef? Three to four ounces of that. I see you're monitoring me, Kara. <laughs> I, won't, I won't go crazy. <laughs> We're also going to use some fat-free sour cream. And you, you can keep this where it's maybe more vegan-friendly and, and use uh, silken tofu as opposed to these dairy components that we're using here today. So, so far, this is almost like a blank canvas because there's not much flavor going on besides just the corn uh, that we have in there. Um, if you want to add more things in here, we're going to simply go and add, add chives and that's it. But you can add basil, you can add tarragon, go crazy. you can add whatever, right? Cilantro and lime, lots of other kind of variations you can do in here. I was just experimenting the other day with um, those little key limes, mm -hmm. those little, and um, I, I just, I made a salad with a little bit of the key limes, some cilantro, and just a dab of olive oil. And it just like completely popped with flavor. Uh, it was, it was, it was really, really good. Like all of a sudden I'm all into the key limes as opposed to the regular limes. I just thought they were bursting <laughs> with some awesome flavor. And it was just like really clean and fresh. One really delicious. We were able to get these uh, little finger limes here one time before. They're almost, when you cut them open, they're almost like little tiny like caviar pieces. And when you scoop yeah, it out, it's really, tiny, really strange. But strong in flavor. Really, really yeah, good. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting citrus out there. There's, there's a lot of interesting herbs out there. Just the other day, I used garlic chives as opposed to simply just using regular chives. Garlic Super chives. Super flavorful and intense. Nice. That actually stunk my whole refrigerator up. I was like, like when you opened like, it up, you're like, ah! get these things out of here. <laughs> I had to see through them away. They were so intense. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's garlic chives. All right, so. Looks pretty, chef, and super easy. Love yeah, it. Yeah, super easy. And like I said, it, you, you can use this for other things, too. If you want to throw this in some mashed potatoes, if you want to just go ahead and use it as the dip alone, put it as a spread inside of a tortilla or something like that, let's turn it on and we'll be almost ready to go. One thing to point out is I did chop up the chives because they're very long and they're going to get wind up kind of getting strung up in the blade. So, so they wouldn't chop up if you just kind of popped them in there. You need to chop them up prior. Ideally, yeah. Yeah. So that's what we're at here now. Super thick and creamy. So you feel like you're getting this cream, like it looks like real cream, but so not, right? That's the plan. That is the plan. I like the plan. Yeah. And one other rule of thumb that I always like to tell all of my clients and, and pretty can guess is that if you are going to use something that has some fat in it, it's always a great idea to fill it up with fiber. So matching um, the fat with the fiber like the corn is an excellent idea because it really does dilute the fat, but you still get the creaminess that you're after in the flavor. So Correct. great combo. And this stays in the fridge for, I'd say about um, yes, five days or so. It'd be just fine. Could you and, freeze uh, that? Not so the, much. The amount of dairy that's in there, I would say, doesn't kind of come back as life. I mean, when you when you freeze something that has a high dairy ratio like this does, it winds up kind of getting more kind of crystallizing and separating a little bit. Not kind so of when, good. It, when, you, when it comes when you th try to thaw it back out. Uh, but you know, good other know. things would, would, would thaw out better, like a hummus that has no, no dairy in there would be a better thing to, to, to do. Okay, so cool. We don't have anything to dip it in there yet, right? So let's do, do something that'd be nice and flavorful and show you some sort of variation of, of vegetables that we have here. I mean, this could be any of these veggies in here. It could just drop some, you know, some broccoli florets and dip it into there if you want. Um, and whatever it may be, what we'll use here today, let's just grab one of these nice candy cane beets. So Love this, it. This they don't a, look so pretty on the outside, but they sure do look beautiful yeah, on the inside. When you cut them open, it's certainly like a big... Uh, a it's big, like a wow. Yeah. So this is a very nice, vibrant color when you leave it raw. However, when you cook this beet, it does tend to kind of fade all that beautiful color away. So uh, I, I tend to, to tell people, just leave this one raw. It's usually your best bet. If you want to add a little bit more layers of color in here and flavor, uh, we have a, a purple radish here. This is something you can quickly just, you know, leave the skin on, chop that up quick and easy. And this way, leaving the skin on you, you have that little contrast as opposed to having it just be that very light purple only. Cut Plus these up the fiber, and, right? The skin is where a lot of the fiber is located. So just eat the skin. Don't be afraid. Unless it's chicken. 
unless it's chicken. <laughs> Absolutely. The other thing I wanted to add is everybody always asks me, Kara, I need something crunchy. What are your suggestions? These are wonderful crunchy suggestions. I know we all know about celery and we know about carrots, but maybe they get a little boring after a while. So why don't, you know, if you can find these things, they're, they're, they're really fun to look at. They look like little candy canes and they're really crunchy. So they, they fill that bill for you. Absolutely. And you know, my, 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 my camera guy, my, our producer, Tony, he told me, you guys are dressed like it's fall and it's springtime. I think this is a nice springtime looking dish here with the yellow and the purple. So and we the made pinks. up for it. I think we made up for it, Kara. Yeah. <laughs> There's some celery in here, a little greens. I love how you make everything just look so pretty, Chef. Presentation is everything. Yeah, if you want to go ahead and maybe you know, save some of the chives that we had, sprinkle a little bit more on top. Beautiful. Beautiful. Look That's at that. That's it, roasted corn Look dip, at that. Little veggie sticks. What's coming up next? Let's make some chips here next, right? So ah, we'll keep the that Maria to the Ricardos. side. We'll take this here. This brand is called Maria and Ricardo's. So this, we'll have it upside down. And move these off of the board. Maria and Ricardo's, this is a quite large wrap, right? It is inches, quite large. This. So we would consider half of one of these to be a serving size. Now, when you cut them up into little chips, it can be kind of hard to gauge. Well, how much is that serving size now? Because I, I just ate that whole bowl. It was quite good. I ate four <laughs> serving sizes. I didn't realize. You know, that's so, why we put the the veggie chips in there correct. too, right? Give a good balance. So what I like to do is cut these like this here. We'll cut them long, like this. Basically, have them into like uh, quarters, effectively. You now I keep stacking them, kind of getting that. Try wow. Get... So ha so look how many triangles you can make out of one of these. Two. We do oh, this two. is two. This is two. Okay. I don't wow. know why I did too, but just because we're just always cause. we're always making lots of food here. So take a sheet tray. We'll give us a quick little mist. I'll let you do the honors. So we make sure we don't. Here, 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 here. You All on. right. Come on, come on, chef. Okay. All I right. got. I always like to go light on the on the spray. I know. And by the way, and I tell this in class all the time. If you look at this spray. It says that it has zero calories, zero fat, zero everything. How is that? Um, how is that? That is malicious is what that is. There, is, there are uh, 1,463 servings in this can and each, <laughs> each serving size is a quarter of a second. So what's, you know, what's, what's a little deceiving about um, this is that there is this law that says if your fat serving is less than 0 0.5 grams per serving, you can put it down to zero. So that's exactly what they did. They made it a quarter of a second of a serving. And so that's about 0.5, they call it zero. And then we think whatever we're spraying in the bottle is nothing, but I, I promise you, this is 100% oil. So each quarter of a second is probably about 0.5 grams. So don't go crazy. When don't you spray go it. crazy on the spray, but a little bit goes a long way. Here at the Pritikin Center, it's like rainbows and unicorns. All you gotta do is show up and everything is planned and prepared for you. But when you get home, get ready for those lions and tigers and bears. Whether you're racing out the door to work and skipping breakfast or glued to the Zoom call and no time for lunch, or maybe you're in retirement and every day is a holiday. The solution, you need a plan. My name is Kara. I've been a registered dietitian for over 20 years and I've helped thousands of clients create sustainable plans that stick. At the Pritikin Center, we offer a one-to-one -one remote nutrition coaching program with me. Together, we will create a customized plan that addresses your lifestyle, your health markers, and any of those derailers that lead you astray. Support and accountability can be the difference between finding success and constantly chasing after it. Sign up today for more information about Pritikin at Home Concierge Nutrition Program. Are we making broccoli or guacamole? What are we making here, Kara? We're making broccoli. So, normally, if you were to make the amount that we're going to use today, you'd probably use maybe a dozen avocados. Now, what we normally would do to make this broccoli here is we wouldn't usually use avocado at all. Uh, however, today, you know, she's giving me the proof. Well, we might put one or two in there, and we'll, we'll talk about why <laughs> we're going to do that. So, what I have here is really overcooked broccoli. Just raw broccoli, put it like this into a pot, steam it, boil it, however you want to do it, we'd recommend steaming it ideally, that way you're keeping in more you know, nutrient value. Absolutely. Uh, but the you want to kind of overcook it. 
You want, so when you do your guacamole, you want to overcook it a little bit because you want it to be a little bit more creamy, uh, mushy. I mean, a little creamy. We don't like to say mushy. Mushy, right? creamy. Mushy is not the, okay, creamy, creamy sounds is a better. better. Word, you know? Yeah, but truth, truth be told, yes, just like Chef Ted said, the longer that you cook the vegetable, you will denature it a little bit and take some of the some of the nutrients out. But I do notice that Chef, you are putting some of the stalks in there. Yeah, which I, are quite fibrous. Yeah, I, I, put, I didn't put the main stalk, but I put but in some put of these. But you put some yep, of yep, it yep. in there. Not just um, florets. Because that's where more of the fiber is. The head of the broccoli does not have as much fiber in it, probably a little bit more tasty, but including a little bit of the stalk, I think is a really, really good idea. Yeah. Because again, just like we, when we made the corn with the cream cheese, we added the fiber in. So our fat source right now is the avocado which is a fat. So we know calorie density wise this for a small amount of avocado, you will be getting a lot of calories. So my rule of thumb is whenever you have a fatty food, regardless of whether it's healthy or not, you've got to dilute it a little bit if weight loss is your goal. Um, so any vegetable that you stick in there, um, you know, vegetables are what, like 65 calories a pound and avocados could be 4,000 calories a pound. So if you really introduce the broccoli or some sort of vegetable with the guacamole, you really, really um, cut down on the calorie density. And it actually tastes really good because you're still getting that creaminess from the avocado and you are getting the superfood. So what's really interesting about avocados- the size this one. It, <laughs> That, like no that's avocado. a big pick. Like, yeah, like no um, but I, I think I think avocados are like um, nature's butter, really, because they're really creamy. Um, they're full of fiber. They have a lot of omega-3 fatty acids, um, monounsa monounsaturated fats that are really good for our brain. They're good for our immune function. Um, they balance our hormones. The problem is, is that we just eat too much of them. So if we could dial it back a little bit, um, a little bit really goes a long way and stick some veggies in there, stick some fiber. I think, I think it's a great combo. Good, good. And again, you know, if I had this whole thing full of avocados, you I mean, you could just look at the volume of broccoli I have in here. I mean, it would you be could a lot. imagine the, the calories that are, and, and for the most part, um, you know, when we go out to restaurants and things like that, what, what are we eating, right? We're eating guacamole and some pita chips and you know, we might think Salt, that we're doing salted, deep fried, <laughs> deep chips. fried, salted. Um, and you know, there's a lot of media attention about avocados and how healthy they are. And, and that is true. But the one thing that we always have to remember is that avocado is a fat. And if weight loss is your goal, you, you got to dial it down a little bit. And this is a perfect way to do so. Now, look, I zested some of these limes and I'm juicing them, but they seem pretty small and dry. So what I'm going to show you is that if you want to you know, not go through all this trouble of trying to extract that little bare amount of juice. Um, obviously you can't zest a plastic bottle, mm. but you can definitely get a good flavorful juice out of a good quality brand like Nelly and Joe's. Um, you know, Nelly and Joe's or Natalie's are two brands that I like to personally use. If you need a lot of lime juice, like we're trying to get here and hit that with a good amount of lime, we'll just go ahead and put that in there. So we're about the juice of like, you know, three or four limes you put in there. That, I love hacks. I, I do love hacks. But my question to you, chef is, do you feel as a chef um, that it makes a difference at all if you use the the bottled? It depends on what brand you're getting. That's that's what it is. I mean, the, you know, if personally, I think you know, if you put this side by side to fresh lemon, you know, most people would be, be able to, to identify the difference or, or 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 lime. This company makes lemon juice or key lime juice, your favorite, right? Yeah. So I, I would say check it out. It's a good quality brand. It's shelf stable until you open it up. Uh, and, and Natalie's is another good one as well. Yeah, so, I, I think it's a good backup. Listen, if you want to use the fresh herbs and, and the fresh juice, I think it's always best. But always on, on the back burner, it's good to have the dried herbs and the dried, you know, around in case you need it. This is some great, great coupon. coupon. And we're using about two teaspoons, maybe a tablespoon or so. Now, Be careful, it's the, about the drip. It's okay. <laughs> so look, we're putting some sodium in here, but we're not using salt directly. So the sodium in here per teaspoon, it's like, where are we at here? Where is it at? Uh, 115 milligrams. So, but that one, and, and this is something very important to note, like, because we talk a lot about um, decreasing sodium here. It's really important. It helps a lot of people decrease risk of cardiovascular disease and um, helps your kidneys function properly and all that. But the condiments are something that you, you know, common sense wise, if you're using something that's salty, like a great Poupon, 
but it, it comes across maybe say, you know, 15 servings, then you have to think about, well, how much sodium are you actually getting from the amount that you're eating? So you got to really be careful, but in, in things like, con like condiments, that's exactly what they are. They're just small pieces of the pie. Yeah, that's we, a lot of flavor. So we wouldn't want to give you a spoonful as a small ramekin here with like a veggie burger if you ordered it, but using a little small amount of it in this big volume and spreading Correct. that sodium out, we'll be more okay with it. Now, same thing here. This is Cholula. People probably know they make a couple of different versions of hot sauce. This is their green pepper hot sauce. They make this with poblano and jalapeno. We make ours here called green grotto sauce with no salt. And this is only and no with sugar. And no sugar. We do use a little bit of apple juice concentrate in here, but a small amount. And, and, and this here is something we make in house. Most people aren't going to want to go through the trouble of doing that. So you might want to go buy one on the market. Be aware that the sodium is something you have to keep in mind. Per teaspoon of this, it's 150 milligrams per teaspoon. Once again, we'll spread it out. So you wouldn't want to use this as a condiment. Exactly. And we really wouldn't want to use this ideally at all because we already got the Dijon in there. So kind of lowering the overall sodium. And, and look, if you make this yourself, you can portion this out, you can freeze this, or simply look for one on the market that's as low as sodium as you can find. It's a good green verde sauce. It's a, it's, it's a good hack. And it's funny that we're actually using this green sauce, grotto sauce today, because just yesterday I was talking with a guest and she's really been trying out a lot of the recipes from, from the Pritikin cookbook and she specifically mentioned the grotto sauce and she said um knowing me honestly i don't think that i'm going to do that do you have a good alternative because um i really liked it when i was at pritikin but listen you got to be realistic with yourself and know what you're willing to do and what you're not willing to do so of course i will always tell you that to make it yourself is the best way to do it but um a, a, a hack and buying it at a store when you find low sodium is is perfectly fine because if it helps you do better and be better and eat more vegetables, then why why the heck not? Yeah. Right. So you always have to take that into consideration. It's not like well, if I'm not going to make it homemade, then I'm just going to go and um, you know get it from the outside, which is going to be a lot more salty or sugary or fatty. Or so, just always remind yourself better is better, and if if it's not perfect, that's okay too. No, we can we're always work on always work on always you know, you, working you, on listen, it. Doesn't, you know, things don't happen overnight, right? And sometimes people just expect the biggest results and changes instantly. And then you have to work to the, you have to work to, to see results. So real quick, I chopped some tomatoes up while you were, you were talking, but I didn't want to add too many other things. Uh, the tomatoes and red onion will get folded into this dip after it's after. blended, right? So don't puree the tomato into there. Okay. This is some Mrs. Dash, some ground up Mrs. Dash. We're also going to use a little bit of raw garlic in here as well. Give a little sharpness to this. And we're going to finish this by using some fresh flat leaf parsley, Italian parsley, and some cilantro. I like to use a little bit more parsley than cilantro just to kind of tone down the intensity that the cilantro tends to have. We'll throw all this in there. You don't need to chop this up because this is going to wind up getting all blended up into there. Uh, whereas the chive we did for another recipe. We need recipe. a bigger, a bigger container. <laughs> a little fit. I'll turn it on. We have broccoli that's overcooked. We have some avocados. We have our Mrs. Dash seasoning. We have lime zest, lime juice. We have garlic, we have a little Dijon mustard, we have cilantro, we have parsley. Um, I think I'm missing anything? No. I think Our you green got it all. sauce, we said, yeah. <laughs> See, we made some space. But the, but the, okay. <laughs> Those will get strung up there. So we'll take a little bit of this red onion here. We'll cut the top and the bottom off, a little cut down the side like this. We'll peel that first layer of onion right off here, quick and easy. And we'll get this minced up here. Maybe just do half of this onion. We're eating maybe even not even that. Some nice color you got going in there. Nice flavor. I always feel like to me, red onions are salty. They taste salty without having any salt in it. You so think so? I do. Well, yeah. Shallots and, and red onions I find to be a little bit of a salty flavor. It can be a little sharp, you know. I think raw onions are very, you know, very intense. So everyone, some, some people might Different find this palettes. to be too much, you know, or that sharpness yeah. in there. Just kind of break this apart before it gets folded into the dip. This should be basically ready to come out. What do you out. think about, um, just to lighten it up, if it, if they didn't want something as sharp like a shallot yeah. instead of yeah. the red onion? I mean, might you can simply little... just use chive in here, right? Or chive. scallion, and it'll be, you know, have that mild onion flavor. So know that about yourself. You know, if you, if, if you, you can always take what we're showing you and you can make it your own, 
right? Maybe you want to use different herbs. Maybe you want to use shallots instead of red onions. Maybe you want to use chives. It, it all totally works. You can works. definitely change these recipes up. And For totally sure. Ready? Five, four, three, two. Let's pull it. All right, so Again, that's nice Again, look and at creamy. the cream. Look at the the cream that the broccoli created with the with the avocado. It's, Pretty it's, gosh darn amazing. It's I nice, cannot right? wait. I cannot wait to. Could you, you pass one of those big bowls over there, please? Yes, I can. Now here's another cool thing. We make the same exact recipe, and we call it lemon broccoli dip. You know what we do differently? We add instead of cilantro and lime, we add lemon and basil, and we don't actually fold this in. We just keep it like this, so it's more smooth and creamy. To create it more like a guacamole texture, we are adding this extra kind of you know components. This tool right here is attached to your wrist is the best tool in the kitchen. <laughs> Love it. Love it. And you know, if you want to so get another pretty. utensil Looks dirty, awesome. you can or simply get a glove on and fold it up quick and easy. And you know, here's your your you know, and your guacamole, guacamole, whatever you want to call it. I bet you know, you tell somebody this that you made this with. I wish you, know, you guys could smell this. It smells delicious. I actually do another little slight vari variation of this. I call it guacamame. With edamame? And I put uh, guac the avocado with the edamame, and um, it gives it that kind of nutty kind of texture. Throw it in there, you know? And it's, it's super good. fibrous, so. But this is actually even lower calorie density because the, the broccoli will be a lower calorie food than the edamame. And maybe use so. a little bit of both. Maybe we used to actually a have a recipe both. here called broccoli and edamame dip, so. Maybe you're on to something you need. There's just so many ways to do these things. That's 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 the theme, that's right? That's it. Are these ready? It's ready to go. So we pulled out our chips here for this recipe as well. And you know, obviously, you know, vegetable sticks is always ideal, but if you do want to serve some some um, you know chips and keep that kind of crunch, um, you know, certainly kind of making them yourself as opposed to opening up a bag of deep fried corn tortillas that are salted, I mean, is always a better option uh, 100% of the time. I mean, time. think about it. You're having people over, what are you doing? You're grabbing a, pat, uh, a bag of Tostitos or corn chips, right? And you're just buying the store-bought guacamole that's all fat and added sugar. Yeah, um, most of these store-bought runs are always gonna have a high amount of salt, so, sugar, fats. Um, yeah, I Whatever. think people will like this just the same. Yeah, if you told someone this was you know, just made as a traditional um, guacamole, they may tell you, hey, is there broccoli in here? You say, yeah, I have a little broccoli, but don't tell them that you made it mostly broccoli. You can, you can yeah. really trick people. And, just and say, it, I made this dip. It's, it's healthier it's than flavorful. you. It's flavorful. It's healthy joyful. and You're it's tasty. It. And just open your mind and give it a try. We need some and veggie sticks need, in here, huh? Yes, we do. All right, we'll throw them in there too. So, Looks great. Moving on to the next recipe, we'll pop this in the fridge. We'll add some carrot sticks or something like this to brighten up these, with even some more color and some, some less overall calories. Just wanted to show how crunchy. Yeah. Oh, so those are great. You can chop those they're up like and put Stacey's. them on a salad as well, you know? So it's pretty And they're not Stacy's pita chips. Sorry, Stacy, but you're out, right? So we'll pop this one in the fridge as well. Andrew here told us that Pritikin helped change his life. Andrew, tell us your story. As a golfer, I'm ridiculously competitive. Apart from golf, I love most sports, particularly skiing. 2015, we were skiing in France, having a great time. Got back to the hotel and started feeling pretty ill. Turned out uh, I was having a heart attack. What happened? Are you okay? Within a week, I'd had quintuple heart bypass. They gave me 7% chance of living. Then I found Pritikin and I made it, which was pretty miraculous. Now I feel I'm as healthy as anyone my age, if not healthier. Talk Talk about a winning mindset. I you. thought I'd look up somewhere that had a bit of golf and a bit of sun. Went online, booked myself in. I had a whole series of physical examinations, blood tests, ECG tests, gym tests. Whoa, Andrew, what about the golf and sun? <laughs> that was quite reassuring to see how medical they were and that I was being looked after by real doctors. They have really good counselors here, great dietitians here. The gym staff are wonderful. If they can see you're doing something wrong when you're by yourself, they come over and assist. It's quite a personal service. We're always here for you, Andrew. Say, Hey, how's your golf game? Strength's probably my short game. Anything within 100 yards, I'm pretty good. I'm a solid, sort of irritating golfer. You don't want to play because I don't give too much away. Let's put it that way. Outstanding. What's next for you, Andrew? Anyone who's gone through a major trauma and is feeling insecure and scared, that's where I was. I'm a different person now. I worry about a lot of things, but I don't worry about living a good, long, healthy life anymore. Andrew, you're a real inspiration. Thank you for sharing your Pritikin story with us. If you need to take a wellness retreat like Andrew, Check out Pritikin.com.
So yeah. last but not least, we have one more recipe to make, which is our roasted corn and black bean sausage. We did add some corn into this oven when we first came in here, and it's probably done here now. Perfect. It's hot, but it's fine. So to make this corn, all we do is just take it out of the refrigerator, didn't soak it in water, nothing like that. Simply just went ahead and put it in the oven for about maybe 25 minutes or so. I think it's at 400 degrees is what it's at here now. So you can see when it comes out of the oven, it is very hot. So be careful. And perfect. You see the steam coming out of that. So best idea probably would be to let it sit for a little bit, let it cool off. Ideally, yes. But <laughs> okay. as, as you see, you make a mess kind of with that little burnt pieces and it, it is very hot. So I'm going to get it out of here. But breaking Ouch. that off, you're going to make a little mess as you're doing that. So you might want to you know, be aware, do it over like a trash can or something like that. Okay, so that's the corn. Once again, let's go ahead and uh, we'll show you how to make this roasted corn and black bean salsa. So this is something that you actually don't need a processor for. You don't, no. So if you just want to kind of get this whipped up, if you want to use canned black beans, you can as well. Uh, you know, most grocery stores will sell uh, no salt added canned beans. So if you want to find that to be an easier way to to do this, I would say just, you know, go ahead and buy some, some canned beans and, and just make Dump it Dump it and forget it. That's, that's what I've been doing. And by the way, um, we always do promote the uh, no salt added beans. If you want to do the dried beans and, and soak them and make them, that would be the creme de la creme, but the can totally works. Yeah. And, and by the way, sometimes people can't find no salt added. They can find low sodium. My best suggestion would be to really rinse it very well in a colander and you can get some of the, some more of the salt. Yeah. Off. So here I have a little bit of that red onion for left, left over from the last uh, recipe that we used before, the brac broccoli. Trying to get this really thin slices. I think it's probably all we're going to need here. Get that little sharpness of the raw red onion. We'll kind of go in an angle a little bit. Just lay it down here at this point now, make it easier. Little okay. tip in, in onions, by the way, there's something called allicin, which is an awesome antioxidant. Um, that just, just a little side note that anytime you can add onions to anything, just know that you're adding something great for your heart, um, something that kills free radicals, something that's helping your immune system. So, and it, and it's like I said, I like it for salty flavor. Yeah. Your red peppers here, lots of vitamin C. Vitamin C also is an antioxidant. So whatever whatever dip you're making right now, chef, is high in antioxidant value. It's going to keep us young, right? Well, I'm trying to stay young as forever. So we'll see how that goes. I mean, you're this doing is a, a good job. Center, that's why I've worked here for so long. Right? What are you on like 15 years now? <laughs> you're, you're right. I you're right. That. So, so love the colors. We have lots of, this is a nice little Christmas color going on, combo going on here with the red and green. Um, you know, throw, throw whatever peppers you want, right? If you want to throw some orange pepper, yellow pepper, it doesn't have to be green and red. So we have the red onion now with these peppers. We don't really need all that much. Let's go ahead and whip this up into a bowl and show you what else we're going to add in here to finish off this, this salsa here. This right here is a good starting point. We have that roasted the fibrous corn. corn we'll and beans. Was, so this is, this is what we use a lot here at the Pritikin Center as, um, as our protein source. Um, did you know if you have a cup of beans, just one cup of beans, you will be getting um, 15 grams of protein. And you're, in addition, you're getting 15 grams of fiber. So this, this food, not only is it no, no animal fat, no cholesterol, um, but you get plenty of protein so you don't always need to go to the animal to get to the, the protein that you need. You can absolutely do it with things like black beans, lentils, chickpeas. Um, and what I love about the plant-based proteins is they are giving you fiber as well as protein. You don't get fiber from animal. You only get fiber from plant. So it's great for um, if you have high cholesterol levels, if you're trying to stabilize your blood sugar. Uh, what we need to finish this up with is adding some of this citrus, if you would like to do the honors here. Again, we have fresh lemons, fresh limes, but if you want to use a little quick, you know, easy, you know, quick hack, we'll throw that into there as well. And by the way, you, you could probably make this thing in five minutes. You, you could do um, frozen corn, right? You could do canned beans, and you can also buy your um, peppers and your onions already chopped up. Yeah. So correct. you can do this thing in lickety split time, and that's probably how I would do it. <laughs> I always used to like to use fresh corn, at least. You know, the, the fresh corn over frozen corn. The frozen is corn is always gummy and soggy and it just really doesn't work out as well. So 
Let's just go ahead and add this fresh parsley, fresh cilantro in here. We'll finish this up. Beautiful. Did you add any of the lemon or just lime? I just added the lime. You know me and lime, so I'll add some lemon. Is that good? Yeah, a little dash more, right? We're gonna yeah. add a little sharpness, and we're gonna balance it up by adding a little bit of apple juice concentrate into there. We're also gonna use a little of that green hot sauce into there. And we'll give this a quick toss. Woo! And you can go ahead and keep this in the refrigerator for a couple of days and snack on it with some chips, with some veggie sticks, with whatever it may be. Have this you know, as a side dish with some grilled chicken or something, you know? That's, it's that's exactly, actually, you read my mind. If you are making fish or chicken and you're not putting, you know, any oil on it and, and not any salt on it, and you have leftover of your salsa, you go ahead and just take your chicken and plop that on top and have a big old salad and you're good to go for for the next day. So when, when you're thinking about, um, oh my God, I, there's so many things that we did at Pritikin and I, I don't have the time to cook every day. Um, what you can do is you just make extra of something and you repurpose it and you reuse it on the next day in, in a different way. And um, what seems overwhelming actually is totally doable. It's all about planning and preparation. So folks, we made three dips in about 35 minutes or so, however long it was. Roasted corn dip, we made rocamole, and we also made a roasted corn and black bean salsa. Cheers. Enjoy. Enjoy. Folks, if you like this video and you want to see another cooking demonstration, click here. If you want to listen to our podcast, click here.